Hey everybody, thanks for joining us on the Gecko Pod. We are episode 28. We are a podcast for the Gecko community where we talk about the hobby and the business side of breeding geckos. We're here to gather everyone together to learn a lot, to grow together, to develop our hobby and um, just uh, allow everybody to enjoy what they're doing and be encouraged by what they're doing in the, the reptile world. And so my name is Harry <clears throat> at Zero's Geckos. AJ is AJD Reptiles co-hosting, and today we have a special guest, Donna. All the guests are special, but Donna, you're special <laughs> you're in the UK, <laughs> and we haven't uh, interviewed any uh, UK breeders yet. So Donna at Crimson Cresties. Yay! Uh, I think everybody knows uh, Crimson Cresties, even in the oh, US. I hope so. <laughs> and so Donna, um, uh, tell us a little about uh, about yourself. Uh, where were you born and raised? Where are you located as uh, Crimson Cresties? Um. If you think of the UK like that, I'm kind of in the middle, which okay. <laughs> we call the north of England. Um, so I'm in Yorkshire, and it's quite rural, lots of countryside. Oh, nice. Um, so, but I'm close to the um, the motorway. I guess you guys call it the freeway or whatever, highway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so you can get to where you need to go, like London, really easily. So... Although I'm rural, it's you can you've got good connections. So yeah. Um, but I usually courier. I don't. People don't collect the geckos from me. They um, we courier them all over the UK or mm, ship okay. them out to the US or Europe. Okay. So, yeah. Where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. <laughs> were you were you born and raised in that area where you're at? Currently? I was. Yeah. Yeah. Half of my family are Welsh, and mm. the other half are Yorkshire. So. Um, yeah, but I've been born and raised up in the, in the North of England. That's awesome. Yeah. So. And <laughs> how did you come up with the uh, Crimson Cresties? Where does that name come from? Well, um, I didn't actually create that name. My friend did for oh. me. Um, I was inspired by some red geckos that Tom Roberts from Extreme Cresties had. And I was mm. just they came up on my feed. I'm not even sure how. Maybe a friend liked them or something. They came up on my Facebook feed, and I was, like, gobsmacked. I just look at, looked at this bright red gecko, and I was like, that doesn't even look real. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. That color is insane. And he had it on a, a silver branch, like a silver birch, and the red just popped. And I was like, oh, my God. And I was just obsessed with these red, red and cream or red and white geckos. And that was like, I was obsessed. So yeah. I used to go to my friend's pet shop. She had a pet shop in the village. And um, I used to breed uh, royal pythons. So I had a big, mm. quite a large collection of royal pythons or ball pythons, you ball guys pythons, call them. Yeah. 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 So mm -hmm. I'm really, you know, I was really familiar with um, genetics and, you know, codom and recessives and that kind of thing. Um, so I, I said to my friend, you know, I, I wouldn't mind getting one of these uh, these crested gecko things. You know, they, look, they keep popping up on my feed. And yeah. um, so I got in touch with Tom and I got my first gecko from him. But it wasn't red. It was black. <laughs> I don't even know why. So you I was it supposed to be red or no? <laughs> yeah. I, I, at that point, I just liked all the pretty ones and... Mm. There was this girl that had a black and cream harlequin, and I was like, oh, my God, the, the contrast, black, white, that's insane. Yeah. Mm. You know, so the jet black and the white. Yeah. Um, so I got in touch with Tom, and I got my first Cresty, and I called it Gomez from, oh. um, yeah, the black, black and white tuxedo thing. Yeah. And um, I had to get in touch with Tom, and I said, look, this thing you've sold me is jumping around, like, all over. I can't control this thing, you know. <laughs> So he did these he did these uh video hand walking videos for me. And I still have those. <laughs> I find it yeah. so crazy that you know he, he had to even show me how to how to hold this thing. Um I was like, but I was hooked. That was it. I was hooked. Yeah. When yeah, was so that, Donna? What year was that? When you got your first uh, I I've been having a look at that because um, <laughs> you know, because I knew I was coming on here and I was like, when was that? And it was 2013, so 10 years mm. ago. Okay. Wow. I was like, how has it been that long? Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, almost as long as AJ. <laughs> yeah, time flies. No, AJ's, 
Um, you, I, you guys, um, Donna, do you and AJ know each other from way back? What's the history between you guys? Um, I used to follow AJ because of all his beautiful, beautiful, big crested geckos yeah. that we had. Just yeah. I would just follow. So I, I think I was one of your followers, like stalker, right from the beginning. <laughs> um, and I just was like so inspired by them. I was just like, I'm just ogling them. In fact, I downloaded a picture. I read all your main breeders and I had them in a folder and just kept <laughs> putting them on my desktop. That's so I was funny. like, oh my God, they're yeah. just amazing. So yeah, I've had Good quite awesome. a few heroes in the US that I've looked up yeah. to That's for quite cool. a long time. And it was insane that I met them back in Tinley in October. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, I've oh. followed you for like 10 years, you know, and now I'm getting <laughs> to meet you. It's crazy. Just yeah. this past Tinley was the first time you came came and met a bunch of the US breeders? Or you've been here before? Um, well, funnily enough, I um, that wasn't the first time I've been to America. I actually lived in Potomac, Maryland for about two and a half years. Okay. Um, um, but that was the first time I've ever been to a reptile show in the U.S. Oh, and it was okay. like, so oh, it was huge, cool. yeah. huge, yeah. amazing. Yeah. It's it's I always amazing. I just run over to everybody that I recognize. I'm like, oh my god, I recognize you from online. I was like, yeah. now you're actually here. It's crazy. That's very cool. Yeah. When you go to other shows and then you go to Tinley, you realize how big Tinley is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Tinley's pretty big. Like any well, show compared, compared to, that. to our little shows in the UK, oh my God, they're tiny. And that was like, it just kept yeah. going on and on and on. You <laughs> yeah, could tell, walk forever. Yeah, tell us about that, about the UK shows and kind of the the the, um, the culture the, there. Yeah, the culture geckos. and the crested gecko community um, there. Is pretty small there. Uh, the, U the UK shows are run by a society called the IHS, which is the International get it right International Herpetological Society, okay. and they're aimed at kind of amateur breeders. Um, so, and the four they they're only four times a year, four. Wow. So they're wow. not like in the US with one every month in a different state. Yeah. And you get to go to hundreds of different shows. Yeah, there's a lot it's, here. It's yeah. It's four times a year and that's it. They, wow. There are some little local shows, but they're not as well known. The IHS it seems to be the biggest. When I say big, it's like a tenth of the size of Tinley, you know. <laughs> it's not mm. big. Um, so, they're, you know. Um, and they can be a bit samey. When I say samey, you, you get spiders, ball pythons, Crested leopard geckos, then we're back to spiders, and then we're back to cresties, and then so there's you know occasionally you might get a garter snake booth where there's like all different kinds of garter snakes or something different, or but mm. there's yeah there's not much variety, when, especially when you've been to somewhere like Tinley and there's like hundreds and hundreds of different species. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, can, mm, it's okay, but not <laughs> as good as the US, obviously, because so, it's so a even, lot bigger. Yeah. So even when you have the four uh, four shows a year, those are also pretty fairly small, uh, relative to the quite, US. Okay. Oh yeah, quite small. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they're amateur. So you meant you're not meant to be able. You're not meant to be a professional. So mm. in other words, now that I'm licensed. I wouldn't yeah. be able to go to one of these shows as a vendor. Um, and they so don't, be, because, be, I know it's, it's, it's a little bit sad. When you've been to an American show and then you, you think of the UK shows, you can't have logos. So I wouldn't be able to have, you know, Crim Crimson Cresties yeah. anywhere. Um, I when I when I the last show that I went to was last June I think it was and I had my little sticker on the tubs yeah so they would remember where they bought the gecko from and I was told to take all the logos off wow so that's crazy so because it's, it's it looks more professional and it's not meant to be a professional thing so um yeah that's very interesting um yeah. so yeah so I won't I can... won't go go on sorry. Yeah. You can post, uh, so you can have a website with your logo and everything on it. You can sell yeah. geckos there, and you can yeah. ship them to people in the UK, and that's yeah. not a problem. No, 
That's so strange. <laughs> <laughs> it just seems very, kind very. of inconsistent. <laughs> so at the at the shows, then they how many geckos do people have on the tables? Is it like not very many at all? Um, it it depends. Like. It depends. I mean, some people go and they go full throttle. You know, they'll have okay. some people even have two tables. Oh wow! So okay. two two booths. They have that mm -hmm. many to take. Um, I used to have a table next to my friend. And um, we would do, you know, do it together so you can chat and look after each other's table yeah. if you need yeah. to go for a coffee, that kind of thing. Um, so I would go with maybe it's the thing is as well in the US, you have like a three day event. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. the Friday, Friday the IP day, then you have the Saturday, then you have the Sunday. In the UK, it's one day. Mm. So you've got to remember you only take enough that you think you're going to sell on the day not enough for the whole weekend you know mm -hmm. so um so you go with about i don't know 20 or 30. okay okay kind of maybe yeah. well i did yeah 15, then, 20, that kind of thing so you know you talked about licensing and we could talk a little bit about more about that in a bit but when do they when is it too much like let's say you have 100 geckos <laughs> at a show <laughs> do, do they say hey sounds like there's <laughs> amateurs with hundreds there. <laughs> amateurs with hundreds of geckos <laughs> you're not an they... amateur <laughs> yeah that's funny how do they know like how do they know uh... i have no idea i okay. have no idea <laughs> got it got it because yeah because some of the tables that you go to will have like black knights on their leopard wow. gecko and I mean, I look at those and the price stuff so expensively, and I put it down <laughs> pretty much. quickly because I I went to the black. I looked for the black. And I thought, oh my god, this looks amazing. And I saw the price and I popped it back down. And I'm thinking, <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, it's 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 a strange setup. I think okay. things are on the change though. From, um, I spoke to the organizer of the IHS, and um, he. He's, he said things are on the change. So what that mm. means in exactly, I'm not sure, but I think yeah. things do need to change somewhat yeah. because it's just, it doesn't make any sense yeah. that now I can't vend at the show and I'm doing everything, yeah. I'm doing it everything right by being licensed. So. Yeah, it discourages anyone from actually complying with like what they want you to do because exactly. it's actually, it almost is like, at that point, it, it's, yeah, it's counterproductive, or it's almost like a, a punishment for becoming exactly becoming yeah. a professional. You know, yeah, <laughs> exactly. But yeah, also, yeah. I mean, shouldn't people encourage small businesses to try and do well? You know, because yeah, if I do well, the economy does well. I contribute. Yeah. I pay more tax. You know, yeah, it, it's a no-brainer. If it makes if sense I was to in the us. government, I would want the small <laughs> businesses to do well because they're paying me and pay, they're paying the government. So mm, it yeah. doesn't make any sense to me. I don't get it. Yeah, yeah that's very weird. <laughs> you had mentioned, yeah. Donna, that um, there is not nearly as many species when you go to these mm. um, IHS shows. Yeah, no. Do, you, do yeah. you work with, um, as far as your collection, do you work with mm -hmm. other species other than crested geckos? I do, um, yeah. yeah. What, yeah, do, you have, what got... do you have still? Um, I've got in smaller amounts than my cresties, they're the main thing, but I do have um three is it three? Three pairs of um chewies. Oh, so nice. um yeah. so Pine Island and Mainlands. Nice. Um I like colour and collars, which mm -hmm. is hard to get. So that's yeah, I'm still working on that. But I don't get as many eggs and it's a bit discouraging. Yeah. They're kind of new to me. I've only done them for the last two or three years. So um, I'm still getting used to them sticking the eggs on the side of cork or, you know, yeah. <laughs> the lay box and, is in the middle and they, they stick it on the bottom of the food bowl, you know, on the ledge yeah, or something. Or underneath like... the lay box. Or... <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, so I've got Chewies. Um, what else have I got? I've got Eurodactylodes. Hmm. So, I've got three out of the four species. I've got the Veladi, the Agricole, and the Occidentalis. And I'm going for the Symmetricus as soon as I can, but shipping them in is quite expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And the, the, the one country that seems to have a lot of variety with the Eurodactylodes is, the, is Germany. 
Um, yeah. So yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try try for that soon. Eventually, are, are, I'll get. It's like Pokemon. Yuri, I'm trying to collect all four. You know. <laughs> um, are Yuri's pretty popular in in the UK? They're becoming more and more popular. Okay. I think okay. it's because they they don't go away and hide. Yeah, yeah. They sit on yeah. the little twigs. They're just out and, and out. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's so cute. cute. And they, they have such a big personality to say they're so little. Mm, and yeah. they don't, you put them in your hand and they don't scamper off like morning geckos, like zippy, like, yeah, yeah. Phew, and they're gone. Yeah. Um. So, they, you know, you can handle them. I don't think they like being handled that much, but now and again I will. You know, they're kind of cute. And um, I think for a small species, they're like, they think they're mini leeches. I'm pretty sure they think they're leeches. <laughs> a lot of attitude. They, they like, <laughs> and they just sit there. <laughs> if you upset them, they like hunch their back and. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they'll, they'll, they'll open their lip up and show you like their yellow <laughs> lip, too. <laughs> Have, uh, how um, long have you been doing Yuri's for? I'm just, I, I'm sorry, I'm just, I love, I'm looking into it. <laughs> I would say maybe three or four years now, okay. and, and I've slowly built them, them up. Yeah, it wasn't meant to be such, yeah. it was meant to be just for a little side project for fun, you know, but it's grown into a bit more mm. serious sort of project now. Now that I'm get, collecting the other, you know, the other species, uh, now it's a must. I've got to do it, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I've got this this week alone. I got uh, a few more eggs from the Agricole who have just started breeding. So I've got a little. I think it's four females and one male in a cage, and then um, I've got a trio of the Occidentalis, and nice. they they gave me eggs for the first time. I was like, oh my oh, god! Nice. <laughs> yeah, awesome. uh, yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. But, the thing is, they do look very similar. You've just got to look at the, the the yellow line down to their ear, whether it's broken or not. So, mm. yeah, Occidentalis and Agricoli are really similar. Are they? Yeah, Velardi and Agricoli are a lot more different, but yeah, there's the break, isn't there? The Velardi has the break, and the Agricoli is yeah, joint. It's Velarde mm. have like half as many scales on their heads they're like their scales are much larger so like mm -hmm. if you look at agricoli they have like a lot of small scales and then right. lardi have less scales that are larger mm. so, i tell you with my agricoli they seem to have like a goldeny um intricate like little pattern webbing. that's woven into their scale mm -hmm. yeah yeah, and like it's so color. pretty, yeah, yeah, like an accent color, but it's not just it because some of them have the yellow behind their arms and the legs, yeah, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, but these seem to have little like an intricate. So even if I held one up against the other, I'd be able to tell the agricole straight away with even without looking at the mouth because mm. of this golden. Mm. And I spoke to the breeder I got them from. I said, you know, your your agricole that I got from you are so different from the other one because I got two females from him and a male from somewhere else to get them unrelated. Mm. And the females, you can spot them a mile off. It's like, oh, my word, this golden weaving through their, through their scales is so pretty. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and I've got a, a display cage of morning geckos that are like, Crazy. <laughs> I know. I have I have a cage that has like two hundred in it, and it's, I, I, it's, so, it's so intimidating every time. When I when I did my license and the inspector came, he went, "No, I'm not even going to go in there. <laughs> just keep the door shut and just you know we'll, we'll just walk on by." <laughs> I'm not. Look, I'm not going to look at that one. <laughs> don't even let them out. <laughs> Feed them they quick. Can, shut the door. <laughs> they can get out of control quick. <laughs> That's funny. They're like a oh they're gosh. like a dubia roach bin. You like you look away <laughs> and you just keep feeding it, and then you're like, oh my gosh, there's so many. <laughs> Three months later, it's like taking over. <laughs> they're yeah. everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. But yeah, I don't know what the idea was behind me getting those. It's like. Yeah, but they're awesome. <laughs> now they've just taken off. It's their own little pro. They just do their own thing. It's like, oh my god, that's awesome. <laughs> so, oh yeah. dear. But, um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so I've got a few different things, and I was thinking of getting a leech at some point because the yeah. the sheer size of them. Uh, but I'm 
I'm not sure about the huffing and puffing and yeah, we can, not, yeah. Not too so, bad. The big thing you have to worry about is just how dirty they are. Mm, the they're, 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 pretty, they're pretty gross. Yeah. <laughs> if you can handle that, then I'd say the attitude. The attitude. They're they're really not bad as long as you. Yeah. 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 I haven't had one do that to me yet, but. Just the smearing on the front of cages. I think that might drive me mad. Slowly but surely mad. You just have to accept the fact that that cage won't be as clean as your other cages. Just accept that. <laughs> they, they want to live in squalor, so just let them. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Yeah. yeah so you're mainly crested. How many, how many cresteds? Did you start with how many do you have now? I always like asking that I, question. Oh, see how you I don't know why I had to buy everything in pairs. What what was that about? <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, two becomes four and four becomes eight. And before you know yeah. it, you're a gecko breeder. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I got two from okay. Tom, um, intended to be a pair. And after a couple of years, I, I thought, I'll, you know, when they grew up to size, obviously. I did buy them at quite a good size anyway. I think they're about 30 grams when I first got my, okay. when I got my first, my first geckos. So I went yeah. in and I bought them straight away from a really, a reputable, because I researched it and I wanted to make sure I bought from someone well-known that I could go back to if I had questions, which I did. I must have bugged him beyond belief, seriously, <laughs> but... <laughs> Yeah. But he was really patient, so that you know, I remember that as being a beginner. Yeah. Not yeah. not even been able to hand walk them. So, mm. um, um, yeah. So, I bred in my uh, I think it was after a couple of years, and I set up a page to share all my photos. And I didn't really set up a page to become a business. I set it up just to because I wanted to share. I just wanted mm. to show everyone how pretty this gecko was, you know. Yeah. Um, and it kind of just evolved into me becoming a gecko breeder. I mean, my sister's <laughs> like, did you know you wanted to become a gecko breeder? I went, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's how happened. it seems to happen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I just like geckos. And then suddenly I have 400 of them. <laughs> how, how many breeding pairs do you have, Donna? currently oh i don't know about breeding pairs but i've got about i would say now about 200 okay so, adults <laughs> um all together oh, okay. all together okay. all together that's so not that's not nice. too bad yeah, it's manageable no, that's not it's manageable yeah i justify it in my mind as you know a lot of babies so they can you know when they go i'll be back down to normal numbers yeah. semi-normal <laughs> numbers yeah that's mm. not bad yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's too bad. Yeah, I always tell Harry, we've talked about it, Harry, a couple of times that you're yeah. like, when does it become like, you know, when really hard? And I always, I feel like when I crossed 200, that was the part where I was like, <laughs> oh, okay, I'm, I'm this, this is, then. <laughs> yeah, after 200, it changed a little bit. You know? Before 200, it, it feels, it felt like a hobby and like, oh yeah, this is great. And then after 200, it's like, Oh, feeding the geckos is is work. <laughs> it's a chore. <laughs> it's a lot yeah. of work. <laughs> it mm. becomes definitely a lot more. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so Donna, you have um a lot of projects going on. You have Dals, you have Harleys, you have. You have oh, a I know. Of stuff. I like yeah, so colors. many things. I yeah. just I couldn't <laughs> decide. I ended up yeah. getting projects for everything, like mm. whole yeah, project. Um. Tricolors. I mean, I like tricolors. I really, really like tricolors. But then I wanted to put my spin on it. I wanted white crested, only white crested tricolors. And I've got my, then the, the doll, dolls came pretty soon. Dolls were right at the beginning for me. Um, I even remember a couple of my first um, customers were Sharona from Repti Diamonds, I think. And, yeah, yeah. um, Natalie, is it Kazos from Germany? So I remember my first customers and I still see those geckos and it's like, oh, I sold oh, that. Why cool. did I sell that? You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, um, I like Dalmatians, but I like, I'm like obsessed. They have to have more and more and more and yeah. more spots. And it's like, it's getting them. worse and worse every year. I need to get more spots. It's like an addiction. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ink spots, they've got to be bigger, 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 bigger. Yeah. So, yeah. 
Yeah, I see those I in the know. back of your uh, on your on your banner. You have like the crazy, crazy yeah. spot. So prestige, mm -hmm. and this one's from Sam, um, oh, Chimera nice. from, from Sam Maddox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, That's awesome. Is that one out of uh, Death Star or uh, it's Death Star, Death Star and Cheetah? Yes. Yeah, I have a similar yeah. to that. Yep. Oh, so <sighs> she's That's like awesome. got the most amazing huge spots. They're just absolutely beyond yes. belief. Just huge. Does she have the oil spots too? Where when she's fired I down, they're so. like half, half. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, like yeah. the, the blackness fades. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they kind of, yeah, some of them, some of them are not as black as the other spots. So I think, yeah, yeah she does have a few oil spots, but yeah, that's I won't hold that against her. <laughs> do you have any uh, red, so spot, uh, red spotted dowels yet or not yet? I, I do have, oh, do. Yeah, I've got one, yeah, um, and I bred him last year. And he, he reminds me he's still needing a girlfriend every time I see him. But um, <laughs> he's he's passed on his red spots. So, but I'm trying to put the because my 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 red spot is on a red, and I I, I would mm -hmm. prefer it to be on a pale yellow. So, because yeah. when he fires up, his red spots disappear. Yeah. So yeah. you can hardly see the red spots, but the. I, it would be gr so great to get red ink spots rather oh, than, yeah. you know, the bigger red spots. He does have quite big spots, but obviously the uh, mm -hmm. bigger the better with the spots. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah. I think um, we're talking with uh, Kenny about the his Dalmatians cult <clears throat> at uh, Upside Down Geckos and how he has his red um, his red projects going. And he says they're hard to... They're hard to get. I've not right? seen okay. many. Yeah. Yeah. Red, yeah. red spot on yellow. That's what um, Brian Butler said too. He said that's difficult. They're, they're hard to get. To yeah. Pull off. Mm. Yeah. So that's a challenge for me then. That'll keep me busy. Yeah. I like the challenge. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> you know, for, um, for your for your ink spots, dowels, uh, are there other things that you want to do with them? Or do you feel like you've achieved uh, the project that you wanted to go for? My Last season was the best season, okay. and I've been so reserved in in releasing any babies yet because yeah. I've been. Oh, it's been it. my. I think personally, it's been my absolute best. Wow. Best year because I had the. Mm. I was in. It was. It was when all of the pretty, the really high end, pretty Dalmatians that I bought were all at breeder size. Mm. So I was like, "Oh, this is the year. This is the year. Go for it." So, um, yeah, so last year was my best season with the dolls. So those will start filtering out this year. And some of them are like, oh, my God. I don't know how I'm going to choose holdbacks because at the moment they're all, they're all That's holdbacks. That's a good problem to have. AJ will take some. AJ needs some needs some more dolls. No, <laughs> no, I do, I do, but I don't. <laughs> Maybe we'll get some. Oh, let, me breed, let me breed the ones I have this year. <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah. Do a lot of U.S. breeders ask you for your Dalmatians? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They're willing to ship all that way. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It, it's kind of different for for me to ship to you guys. It always like we're on the worst end of the stick, basically, because hmm. I think you guys can ship quite easily. I can ship it to send it to the shipper and straight over to California. Yeah. Um, but when when we ship from you guys, we have to pay. What is it now? Twenty percent ta import tax wow. of the value of the gecko on top wow. of shipping, on top of the price of the gecko. That's so oh, the US, really the US market is quite a lot higher than in the UK anyway. So mm -hmm. one you've got. So if you're importing uh, now, it's I will only import for something absolutely essential and really, wow. really special, yeah. like mm -hmm. Chimera. Sure. She was. Yeah he was special um because it makes it so expensive for us in the uk shipping from you guys because no disrespect yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not your fault but yeah. the, the prices are higher then you've got the import tax of 20 percent mm. of the value of the gecko and then you've got your That's shipping crazy. and then yeah. you've got to get it from the shipper to the uk as well so it it adds up it is so expensive for us um mm. yeah so yeah. when I would it's probably be probably now. best to trade with us then, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's probably a better way to do it. 
trade well, rather than oh, the value. Well, now then, I've got to say something because this is the most craziest situation I've ever been in because <clears throat> I did a, a collaboration with Shanna from the Christy O'Han, mm -hmm. Christy O'Hana, yes. O'Hana, and yep. um, with Neo Tokyo and Savage Storm, a Winchester doctor. <clears throat> yep. So the geckos, so I sent my female over, over to her, which was, I paid the shipping and that was it. But to get her back, so she's coming back, she'll be coming back tomorrow. So, so yeah. she'll arrive from the, with the courier tomorrow. And I had to pay still 20% import tax on the value of her. So I had to think wow. to myself, well, how much is she worth to me? $100. Right? Okay. <laughs> uh, she belongs to me. So why am I paying 20% tax? That's crazy. That's yeah. crazy. And not only that, so we All had eight offspring. babies. So we had eight. Yes, exactly. So then I'm thinking to myself, well, right. So how much do I value them at? They belong to me. They're free. And then and you then have to I pay to get them. <laughs> That's really crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's very so, inconvenient. Yeah. But also, I did a trade um, with Sharona from Reptile Diamonds, and so I sent her geckos, and she sent me. So there was no money changing hands, but yeah, I still to import. I still got to pay twenty percent. Man, that's so crazy. Wow. My brain is exploding. It <laughs> makes no <laughs> sense. <laughs> Are we gonna get stuff from you, Dana? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys don't pay the tax. That's fine. Yeah. I can ship yeah, to you. Yeah, it's easy for us home. to buy from her. <laughs> yeah, for you. you can't get any of our stuff. It's just very hard to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, this stuff. Um, besides Sorry, your doll. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, it's just us buying from you. That's when it gets a little bit complicated. Yeah. 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 I don't yeah. think people are aware of the 20% tax you've got to pay. And it's like, that really smacks you. You think, oh, no. Yeah. Um, but anyway. I'm, I'm curious about um, kind of the origins of, so I see your background or your, your yeah. logo. I want to hear about Winchester and Camp Captain Fantastic because I always yes. like those animals. Yeah. Legendary so I, animals. I'd love Winchester to hear... is down here. I should have put him higher up. Yeah, actually. I can see him a little bit. Yeah. All right, I'll pull him up. And then Captain up Fantastic, Fantastic is above. Just keep right? talking. Say that again. Captain Fantastic is the animal right above Winchester in that logo. Yeah. Right you, right? yeah. Yep. What's the story um, on those two animals? I'm just curious. Um, Captain Fantastic is a lily exotic. So here we go. Captain Fantastic is a Lily Exotics production. They don't I don't think they breed anymore now though, but they were the the breeders that um discovered Lily Whites. That produced Lily Whites, obviously, yeah. yeah. Um so I bought him <laughs> from a breeder that yeah. That's Winchester <laughs> that's my... with the April Fool thing, yeah. We... <laughs> it comes with but free yeah, gloves thrown in. <laughs> you need them if you hold him. <laughs> he tries to make your hand the whole time. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> you just yeah. said. Just said. <laughs> I remember um, when we did a chat back last year with Winchester, yeah. and I was holding him up, and I was like, and then I put him down on my lap, and I'm like, he's biting my hand. <laughs> he's biting me. <laughs> and I was trying to smile on camera and everything but off camera he was like chewing my hand i was like oh my god <laughs> so yeah so that's I, I thought people would take a joke take that as a joke i thought they would realize it was an april fools but i got some really good serious offers and i was oh, like really what's your what's yeah your like this 20k someone in, <laughs> someone in korea got in touch and they said i don't like pink gloves could i have a different color glove if i bought him i was like <laughs> <laughs> do they have april fools in uh korea <laughs> probably not that's so funny uh, could i get leather oh gloves God. if i want yeah <laughs> winchester's beautiful though where, where did you get winchester from is it your own production or um this is a crazy thing as well because it's kind of everything's just fallen into place just by chance almost um yeah. i had a friend called alice from um i still got a friend called alice um from Crown Cresties. Yeah. And um, she really, 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 and I mean, really wanted a lily white. Um, so I said, well, how, how about I trade you one of my lily whites? And she wanted a male. So she picked out the one that she wanted. And she said she would part pay. So she would, you know, give me some money towards the, the, 
the little white. Um, but in order to pay less, she said, what, you know, is there anything that I've got that you would like from my collection? So I went, oh, I, I'm kind of into the creamy, the white drippy thing. What have you got along those lines? And so she said, oh, I've got um, on the rocks. And we're like, oh, show me her then. So she yeah. showed me her and she said, I've paired him, paired her to Calibre, which is another creamy gecko. So she said, what you could have, what you could, what we could do is you take on the rocks and she's already been paired. So she'll be gravid. Um, and you could take that in an, as a trade. So um, that's mm. what I did. So I took on the rocks um, as a trade for a lily white and so I got how many eggs? I think I got eight eight eggs from that pairing. Wow. But I said, I said, what happens if after a month she 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 lays me duds? And what happens if you know? She said, we'll bring her back and we'll repair her and things will be good, you know. So I thought, oh, that sounds like a good deal. Okay. Um. So all of the eight eggs hatch. I think I got nine eggs, but one didn't. The last one didn't. It was a dud. It it just failed at the end. Mm. And the third from the third clutch out popped this one. I was wow. like, ooh, mm -hmm. that one looks different. Okay. Yeah, yeah I like this one. The, he's yeah. kind of, we'll see how that goes. So I kind of held that one back. I didn't, yeah. And he just kept dripping and changing. And yeah. then the orange started coming in. And then the orange was like electric. Um, he's not even fired up there. He, yeah. He's such a lazy, he, yeah, he won't fire up. Um <laughs> Man. So, did you keep it? Did you keep any other offspring from that pair? Um, I didn't know. I sold all of them um, and just kept him. So it was that's a bit crazy. of a gamble. That's a crazy story. And <laughs> just that's that's how it turned out. So I was just lucky to I was lucky to get. It was more about me helping my friend Alice wanting a, a lily white. I went, oh, okay. And since you're drippy, you know what that's the heck. Awesome. So I'll, I'll just take that. And I was just so pleased that i did because winchester now is my absolute if i sold all of my geckos tomorrow that would be the one even the biting i can put up with i would <laughs> never but you, you know what he's so alert he's so you go to the front of his cage and you say hello I, he's the number one cage as soon as i get through the door and i put him there on purpose because i see to him first because I think if I've gone through all the other females and then I get to him, yeah, I'll smell you like gotta start early there. gecko. How, how so old I is he? He'll, how, will he be four or five? Okay. He could, I so think he's four or five. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I see to him first. So you speak to him, you say hello to him, and he'll come <laughs> boinging across the cage. He will okay. come and you, you do something in another cage and he's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? What's that you're doing? They're so <laughs> alert. I've never known a gecko so alert. That's wanting awesome. to know what you're doing and and keeping you know he'll track you he'll watch you you can see his eyes watching you like well, i don't know whether he thinks <laughs> they're the girl i'm getting that girl <laughs> i don't know what but he's so so alert yeah that mm. you know it's just crazy so yeah, yeah. he's very very special so yeah. um and winchester has produced like so many good things they've he's his offspring are amazing yes and they, he passes on the drips and the cream so well, so mm -hmm. consistently. I've never known a male to be so consistent with mm -hmm. the genetics. It's absolutely insane. Yeah. So, Is this a Winchester kid? Uh, that's Persuader. I call her Persuader. Yeah. yeah. Is this from mm -hmm. Winchester? Winchester daughter. It's Winchester and Rapture. Okay. Wow. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. So yeah, Rapture is from... Uh, Sue, Sue, I don't know if you know Sue Elson. She's she's a she used to be a huge. She's one of my icons that my you know my gecko heroes that I looked up to. The biggest, the best breeder I would say in the UK. And mm. she, so I managed to get a gecko from her with incredible lineage. And um, so I paired Winchester to Rapture, and this is this is the outcome. Amazing. So. Wow. So culminating on fantastic genetics absolutely yeah. and so I, i've i've still got persuader and i'm thinking yeah so she's going to be a future breeder i can't let her go yeah she's wow. so pretty she's so yeah, insanely she's pretty <clears throat> but yeah. yeah i've been really lucky with his genetics he seems to be very consistent with how he passes on his you know his drips and his yeah. 
they seem to just explode. Yes. Some of the babies, you can see them, the, the white spots spreading upwards and downwards from about four or five grams onwards. Yeah. yeah it's just crazy. insane. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, <clears throat> So really, that's yeah. that, that's Keep your project. Going. Is that your project that you would say <laughs> is your um so is this separate from the tricolor project? Do you keep the Winchester stuff kind of I, separate or yes. So but I have sort of mingled the two together to see what would happen. So I mm. paired Winchester to Winchester to Lotsey, who is uh, a beautiful, beautiful white crested tricolor. And um, I paired those two together to see what I would get. And straight away, I got the huge creamy lats. Um, mm. So I'm hoping some of them, because you can't really tell yet. On the head. Um, but if the they head get head. the white crest as well, that would be, I would, that would be great. Yeah. I'd love that. Is this on the camera? Yeah. So this that's that. Right. Yeah. Yes. yeah. She, she kind of got whiter and whiter as she got older. Mm, and she, 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 was, she was a tricolor to begin with. Um, but she doesn't look like it now. She did. There was three colours I assure you when she was younger, but she got whiter and whiter and whiter as she got older. Um, so that is the, the that those are the parents to the the other one that you saw persuader. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. Looking at all your I, albums. <laughs> one thing that I find quite interesting with Winchester is the fact that. His leafy dorsal pattern mm. passes on to a lot of his kids as well. Mm. And one of the kids this time had C3PO written down the spine, which was kind <laughs> of my, uh. one of the followers, I think, just said, he's got C3PO written down the spine of that gecko. I was like, no way. And I looked <laughs> and it was. It's like, oh, my God. But, yeah, so the leafy design seems he passes on really nice dorsals, which is yeah, a good thing as well. Yeah, so that's the the lower one. There is um, an Atom daughter. I don't know if you're aware of Atom. He's another Lily Hello. Exotics, um, Lily Exotics production. They they know what they're doing. Lily Exotics, honestly. Some it's so the sad that they're not breeding anymore. I know. Oh, they're not. Oh, when did they stop? Um, in the last couple of years, I think. It, oh, I've not years? seen anything up on the website for a good couple of years. Yeah. And sadly, 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 when I got in touch and I said, oh, I'd love another one like Captain, you know. And they yeah. said, oh, we've sold all our breeders. I was like, no, uh, <laughs> no. Where did they all go? <laughs> Let's go find that other person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I so know. sad. I was like, if I'd have known, I'd have bought up half a dozen, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, Captain Fantastic but, is so interesting. Like his pattern is so unique. When I see, I, like, I, even offspring that no, I see you produce out of him, crazy, you can pick them this out. This is the crazy thing because I actually keep his line separate from, I try and keep that separate because, to me, it's a completely, he's, he's dark-based because you can see the C and the F showing through his, his laps. Uh-huh. Um, but it's a yellow, it's a yellow tricolor, well, it's a dark-based yellow tricolor. Which yeah. is kind of yeah, a bit odd. I'm trying to look but, for um, it. It's a very unique look. So I I don't tend to mix that with what you saw on the other picture, the atom yeah. daughter. Um, which I'm not quite sure. So I've got like three different tricolor things going on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking trying to look for Captain Fantastic. Oh, this one. Is it uh no, it is posh spice. <laughs> ah, Sorry, you guys keep, that, keep that, that's I'm, I'm an example of the white crested tricolor that I've been oh, that trying to nice. get with the yeah. orange. Yeah, so that's something nice. bright with white crests. And uh, shall I tell you, the the motivation behind that was Barb um, at Creepy Exotics because yeah, it's I know nice. she's inspired a lot of breeders with her beautiful geckos, and that was the closest mm -hmm. I've got. To producing wow. anything anything remotely similar but um nice. trying to get a hold of anything from barb was <laughs> i was like I, I couldn't i didn't manage to prize any mm. from her so i thought well i'll create my own then um so i tried to yeah so oh, those are nice that, what's that bottom yes. right one? Oh yeah yeah so that, that, that it's so crazy 
So um, the top left is Denali. Mm-hmm. Then top right is Posh, Posh Spice, yeah. and the bottom is oh. Delphine. And the, the bottom right still doesn't have a name. Mm-hmm. I know. That one's pretty. <laughs> Dude, this one's so nice. That's, these are mm-hmm. crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so what's trying... the males you breed to these? What are the males in that project? <laughs> well, I've not bred any of those females yet, apart from Delphine. And I've bred Kalahari, which is a Tara <clears throat> Lee production. Okay. Um, so one, I call, I mean, she, she coined the phrase Brindle Quinn. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I've bred Delphine to a Brindle Quinn, which is a Falk and, is it York? Yeah, Falk and York, yeah. Kind of descendant. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I think it was Safari and... Match. Um, tactical Madhouse, I think, oh, was okay. the, the pairing for Kalahari. Yeah, so I've bred him to her, and I've got s- lots. I've got some very interesting brindly, very sh- like extreme brindle, so dark base, then the orangey brown over the top, and then the white, the cream. Um, some of them are like completely covered in the brindle which is yeah. really insane so i need to start mm-hmm. releasing some of those as well um so that that was my 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 white crested tricolor project kind of yeah, yeah, so I've, beautiful. I've got i've got to find a nice ma- male for them now though that's the only thing i've created all these lovely females and i've got to have yeah so did was- kalahari <laughs> make most of those animals in that project or no. What was uh what was the male that made the from like... that group? Uh Noada from Zengex, which mm. was a Jarvis and Jarvis and uh Delf Delphi, maybe. Uh oh god, what was she called? Noala. Noala. So Jarvis and Noala. Okay. That's where the the name Noada, Noada. came from. Nuala, yeah. yeah, which is a Giggle Geckos um, production. So okay. Zengex and Giggle Geckos. Yeah, um, Donna, you know, you, you you have all these projects and you have these amazing mm-hmm. animals. What is, how do you, you know, I'm thinking from a new breeder's perspective, how do you pick and choose what's going to come, how, how to pair breeding pairs, how to develop projects that are so amazing like you have? What, how did you develop that? <laughs> <laughs> that I um I think the main thing is to find a really strong male or a strong okay. female to bait to start like a germ of a, a project to start mm-hmm. you need some you can't you can't just go out and create those kind of geckos from you know pet quality geckos you really mm-hmm. have to search and Sometimes have some savings put to one side and say and jump ready to jump when you see oh I'm making this available right I've got to be in there I've got to get it or make put yourself forward and speak to the breeders and try and get a really you know so you get cornerstone animals to start building a project from from the ground up. Um, do you do a lot of trading so, to get like top end animals? Or I do haven't traded that out? much, to be honest. Okay. But I okay. should do more trades. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe that within the, way the to UK. Get... <laughs> within the UK, yeah. <laughs> Are there a lot yeah, of UK within the UK on the... That's the problem. So now yeah. with certain big, I call them big breeders like Sue and Lily Exotics, not breeding anymore. It kind of does restrict who I can buy from or where you get your geckos from. So um, for me, I I still will ship from the US if it's something really, really special or Korea or, you know, um, I've not bought from Korea. I've always sent, but I've never bought back. So Mm. I need to, I need to keep my eyes out, eyes open Mm. for something special. But yeah, so I would, I would say, the advice I would give if you're creating a new project is look out for really strong cornerstone animals that, and don't think, don't spare on the money on on something like that yeah. because it will mm. pay you back. I think the false economy is to I'm going to buy the cheapest, 
Yeah. And then, mm. you know, you grow it out for two, three years and then you get pet quality animals and you wonder why it didn't, didn't achieve the goal that you wanted. So mm. I would say buy the best that you can afford at the time because it will pay you back eventually. Yeah. And, I- and try and build up your project that way. Um, and when possible... If you see something special in your babies, to hold it back, just even just hold it back, just in case, because you know you want to see how that progresses. Yeah. And if it is something special, hold. You know, don't sell. I know someone who used to breed and sell absolutely every single animal every single season, and I was like, but why? (laughs) Zero (laughs) holdbacks. That's not. That's not good. (laughs) (laughs) Because. To me, you need to evolve. And if you're selling yeah. all your good stuff, how are you going to evolve as a breeder? So, mm. yeah, I mean, with within reason, do hold back. So you don't have to hold everything back. Do you hold um, back but, all your females? Like a lot, a lot of your... <laughs> 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 That's everybody, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm sorry to say that. I, I, I will. I mean, I've been better at selling good stuff lately you know because just because i've got us you can't keep everything you're going to run out of space eventually so yeah. but that in a in a way if you do sell if you do sell something <laughs> good you know that's good advertising for you because they'll yeah. say oh my god can you get that oh i got it from donna over in the uk right i need one like that so they will mm. they will show off their animal they'll be really happy about it they'll want to post about it Hopefully, they may tag you in, so you get. Because Instagram being Instagram, my reach is not very good. So if mm. you do sell something nice and they they brag about it and want to buckle, want to show it off to the world, that's your advertising right there, isn't it? Really, so yeah, it's true. Counter, counterproductive to sell everything good. Mm. Um. So. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. Um. Mm. Oh, good. I want to, yeah, I wanted to ask you, Donna, um, just kind of pivoting a little bit from animal and like, I guess, um, uh, kind of like morphs and, and lineage and all that stuff. I want to ask you a little bit about care and maybe how some of that stuff differ differs from the U S to the UK. Um, I was thinking about, I was talking to Gabby before this and she had mentioned to ask you this, but just, um, like what kind of insects do you have available to you? Like, crickets and roaches and mealworms and is that a big part of how you feed yeah. and kind of how yeah. is that how is that different than here I guess I'd ask you um I'm not sure it does differ to be honest because nothing here is illegal to to feed you know like in mm. certain countries they won't allow dubia roaches um yeah. so we're allowed because I mean it's so cold here they wouldn't survive anyway if they got out I don't yeah. think I think it's in the, the warmer countries maybe they're worried about them taking over Florida Florida too yeah <laughs> yeah um so yeah I mean as part of my license anyway I had to tell the inspector what I what I feed and make sure also I'm supplementing you know with the right things like I use mm. calcium with medium d3 by Rapashi. I use that that's okay. always done me I've always got great results with that so I dust all the crickets I used to have my own Dubia Roach collection, you know, like um, breed. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. Right there. I mean, I, the idea of me saving money and, you know, breeding all my own insects was such a wonderful idea because I thought, you know, I'll feed them all these lovely things and make them really nutritious. And I just couldn't bear <laughs> cleaning the things out. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I sold them in the end, but I did oh. have two two massive collections, you know, two big bins wow. full of them. And I just I had to no, because it was taking me hours just cleaning those things out, you know, and sifting yeah. them to the right sizes and oh I was like oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what? I I I just order in crickets every week now. Okay. I put a cricket order in and I get those delivered. Is that pretty easy for you to get? Are crickets pretty affordable and accessible? Um, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, for my, my Cresty collection, it costs me about, I don't know, 20 pounds a week or so. Oh, that's cheap. But I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. maybe so, yeah. Compared to here. So, <laughs> how many thousands of crickets is that? 
a good couple of thousand, I would okay. say. Two, three thousand crickets, yeah. Okay. Um, but some some adults won't touch them, so yeah. I try them half-heartedly every now and then, but they're still there the next day. I go in hopping about, so I'm like, oh, eating everything <laughs> they shouldn't be eating. So yeah, um, I get yeah, no. So mainly all the, all the baby, I try and get the babies on crickets as soon as I possibly can, hmm. and. Um, the juvies, once they get on crickets, that's it. They're mad about them. Yeah. Um, and are you but, feeding um, Pangea or Apache or what, what's your <laughs> primary diet you're feeding? I usually feed Pangea. Okay. Do you have a favorite I've, flavor? I've got, um, I would say my the favorite that everyone seems to lick the ball clean on is the, the red packet, which is the one with insects with or insects. the fig. They yeah. seem to like the fig, or they like the apricots. They kind of like that. And I sometimes put the um, banana rapashi cream, the rapashi banana cream pie, or whatever it's called. Yep. I put some of that in. They like. They seem to like that. I use the breeders' nice. formula as well. You mix it in. The um, so breeders' it's all formula in the is tasting. interesting. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Isn't it interesting? The breeders' formula is so thick and like gritty. It's so thick. <laughs> It's like it's got good. like sandy texture to it. I don't it's, know what it is. It's so clumpy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I use the blender anyway. So yeah. But otherwise, you'd be mixing and mixing and stirring for hours, wouldn't you? But I use a, a, <laughs> you'd a blender. You'd be having a fork to... and trying it. To... <laughs> I used to do that, by the way. <laughs> you used a fork? <laughs> I, I used to use chopsticks. <laughs> no, stop. <laughs> and then I upgraded to that little hand blender. And then now yeah. I just use, the I little, now like, use an actual frother. You you for, like, frother? Yes. <laughs> yes, I used to use them. <laughs> now I just use a blender because I have enough animals where I just throw it all in. Yeah, there. I blend uh, it. Yeah, just bl blitz it up. Yeah. Uh, oh but but uh, yeah, no, I, I feed. Now I don't know whether, because if you put the crickets in and they don't want the crickets, yeah. I would hate if the gecko is hungry and he can't eat. So and this is I've not got past this yet. I don't know what the solution is to this, but so I always feed I feed Pangea Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and whenever the crickets arrive, so if the crickets arrive, so I order them on the weekend. Weekend if they arrive on the Tuesday, I'll feed them out on the Wednesday. So I gut load them with veggies and, and one day and like, yeah, so they get so they have nice nutrition, and then they mm -hmm. feed them out the next day on the Wednesday. Um, but I will still feed the Pangea on the Wednesday. And the geckos <laughs> learn, the ones that have got a little bit of a brain cell, they learn they they've, got to to <laughs> they've got to pounce on the crickets. Otherwise, the crickets will just dive into the Pangea and just, <laughs> <Yeah>. just, <laughs> just, you just drown. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't want to take the water out and I don't want to take the Pangea out because what happens if they don't want the cricket? I don't feel like crickets today. What do they yeah. eat then? You know, so I feel guilty if I take away the food. So I give them food, but <laughs> they've got to be quick. They've got to be quick. So you see yeah. them, <laughs> you know, <laughs> facing up the crickets. Get them before they dive in the Pangea. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, are you, um? so on your geckos, are you using paper towel and everything or are you using substrate or what's that? Like I am. You? And I've, I've listened to some of your other podcasts. And people are using cocoa husks and on all kinds uh -huh. of things. So I'm thinking, hmm, maybe I ought to <laughs> give those a try. Give it a shot. <laughs> it is a so lot of to cleaning people... to do paper towel for sure. Yeah, I do paper towel, paper towels, and the babies get changed like three times a week, and it's crazy. I'm, every time I go oh in, gosh. I'm constantly changing papers. So, um, <laughs> but I often worry about them biting into you know, substrate. So I'm yeah. not quite mm. sure. Do do people question back? Do people with yeah. using the husks, how often do they change the husks out? You know, the substrate, how often do you change that? Twice a year. I think I had heard <laughs> well I had heard from I won't I won't out who it was, but I had heard from a couple people that maybe it was like spot cleaning, you know, consistently, but then yeah. maybe a complete it, swap was like three mm -hmm. months or three months maybe Something okay because like it's not bioactive is it so i'm wondering no but some of them do do some of them do put in isopods with 
their cocoa husk, but I, it, any place where eggs are being laid, I don't trust isopods. I don't, mm. I know yeah. people say, I know what you mean. oh, they don't, yeah. they don't mess with them. Uh, well, some of them do. So <laughs> <laughs> even like yeah. people have said, oh, powder blues or dwarf whites won't. Well, dwarf whites definitely will, will do it. So yeah. they will eat eggs. I've seen them eat lychee yeah. eggs of like, I've seen him do it. So oh, you would just die, wouldn't you, if they munched a hole in the side of an exanthic egg or something? I would just yeah. like, oh no, right. I would That's cry. <laughs> yeah, right. So I think it probably makes more sense just to <laughs> spot clean and swap the substrate every, you know, three months or whatever. And yeah, um, but it really isn't. It isn't too bad as far as mess, as long as you can keep up spot cleaning. I think a big reason why we change paper towel is probably more of like mold and mildew or yeah. like just general like yeah. humidity humidity plus paper issues than actual mm. feces you know yeah i know for me i like i'm i'm changing more based on that I yeah get, I, I get... i've gone with some pvc cages to kind of like trial those and yeah. so i have a bank of pvc cages because everybody was getting pvc cages i was like i've got to be in on this i need to know what this is like <laughs> Yeah. So with those cages, I could, I think, put the husks in there and see how we went with that. Yeah. Um, I don't have a problem with humidity, though. So, in fact, if anything, I've only I don't missed every day. I missed every feeding day, so every two days. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, don't, I don't seem to have any shedding issues whatsoever. So the humidity in the room is quite high anyway. Mm, yeah. Um it seems to hold quite well. So yeah. I don't have, it's not too high that I would get mold issues, but it's high enough to not have to miss every single day, which is great. Mm. It's really yes, great. Then. So, um, yeah. so Very yeah, so the, co the cocoa husks wouldn't add anything in terms no. of, I mean, they would give me higher humidity, but that's not, I'm trying to save time. <laughs> Yeah, totally. I, the whole time. Yeah. I think that that's, I think the only thing is you have to weigh like, so I have some animals on substrate, like I've got some on cocoa fiber. So like basically dirt, I've got some on the cocoa chunk. Um, and it seems like in my experience, if, even if you give them a lay box, it's about a 50, 50 shot, they use it or they don't, uh -huh. but I, I haven't had any issues with eggs drying out on me as long as you're spraying the cage yeah. you know you're keeping the yeah. cage misted it seems like the substrate's pretty consistently moist or they'll seek out a spot that's moist when they lay the eggs uh -huh. so you just have to factor into your timing like every two weeks or so you got to dig every cage yeah so mm -hmm. if you're okay with that i mean it's i think it's probably less time than doing egg boxes but or yeah. if less time than changing paper towel. Sorry. Um, yeah. But yeah. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It would it be kind be of a trial and error. Trial and run. Yeah. Give it a little yeah. go and see what pick, happens. Something pick like it up. Six, or, six or eight cages and do it and, yeah. and see what you think. Yeah. I like trying new things, seeing how it works. You yeah. know, I'm not stuck in a rut. I do like to. Um, Try different things out so and i heard people talking about it so i'm thinking mm, might give it a whirl see what happens okay. it might yeah. be a game changer <laughs> yeah i think especially on animals like you were saying adults that aren't eating nearly as many insects yeah i think it's a lot more yeah. doable on adults that aren't getting moved up cage sizes all the time yeah like that, that's their cage um yeah they're not being fed many insects it probably makes a lot more sense for those breeder animals i know gabby's Adults are all on dirt at their mm -hmm. house and they, it's worked for them. So, yeah. Um, it's just a big, you got to buy a lot of dirt to transition everybody. So. What, what is dirt? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what kind is of it, dirt are they doing? <laughs> it's, well, I just say dirt. No, they're doing, so they're doing, um, I think it's Repti soil. I think it's a Zoomed prop all right. pro product. Um, uh, is it like so it's a probably fire sort of I think it's like maybe peat moss based. Yeah. Yeah. So it's probably All like right. peat okay. and different like 
Maybe it's like fur bark that's that's ground. It's different organic materials that are blended to give mm -hmm. a, a soil like consistency for reptile habitats. So I used um, to use that. I think something similar in my lay boxes, mm. um, and you could tell when they were laying because there would be these black feet marks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'd see dirt all scattered over, all over the cage. <laughs> all over the cage. I was like, oh my God. Do you use the, um, uh, do you use the New Zealand moss now? Or what do you yeah. use for the? Oh, oh yeah. God. Yeah. For sanity. Yeah. And then you just, I mean, it holds its moisture quite well. And yeah. I use clear tubs. So you just hold it up and they always lay at the bottom. So that makes it so easy. Yeah. You don't even you have to dig. Right from the just hold yeah. it up. <laughs> and you can see the eggs at the bottom. So some of them fool you though, and they they lay halfway, and you put put them back in. You think, why have they not laid? You know. And then two weeks <laughs> pass, and you think, ah, hang on a minute, let me have a proper dig, and you you find them then. But yeah, I have on everybody's yeah. cage um, a little bit of tape, and I just put whenever I find the eggs, I just put the date, mm. and so at a glance, I can see if I need to dig or not. Or, you know, yeah, like, oh, I'm roughly a month. It's been roughly a month. I need to look. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. That's smart. so I can see who's laid. And, yeah. you know, that way, then you know when to start. So you can mm. get excited again. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to ask you, Donna, a little bit about um, you had mentioned kind of the the difference between amateur and professional or licensure and not being licensed. <laughs> And I know that's a process that you went through um, recently. Could you maybe talk a little bit yeah. about um, maybe the requirements that uh, the UK has for licensure um, yeah. and kind of what that process was like for you to go through? So um, the document online, the, the government website states, this is, this is the information I've been given. If you earn £1,000 of um, money in gecko sales, uh, animal sales. Um, you one have to have an animal breeder's license, and two, obviously, declare that to the tax man. Is that one thousand per year or one thousand? One thousand per year. No, that's still bad. <laughs> so no, basically, that's... everyone. That's everybody at the one show. <laughs> one thousand pounds. Oh no, that that's terrible. Crazy. Yeah. So wow. you're fine if you're selling morning geckos. Yeah. Um, Unless you're selling not... as many as you should out of that cage, then you would hit a thousand pounds probably. <laughs> oh <my goodness. laughs> I've oh, got a thousand that's... geckos in that cage. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, I mean, yeah. So with some of the moths that are out now, like cappuccino, exanthic. Like you sell one and... and you're over. <laughs> you one gecko and you've gone that's it so yeah that's crazy i'm not quite sure what the answer is so yeah so it was time so, for you to do that <laughs> it, it was good time yes, yeah. <laughs> yes um so so getting get it licensed wasn't as bad as i actually thought it was uh, the, the guy that came over to my house was so friendly and i could email him anytime and with loads and loads of questions and they give you kind of like um cage requirement sizes so you know so you just make sure all of your cage is the right size um they give you a guideline it's about snout to vent length i don't know if you've heard of that yes yes we have yeah SVL. snout to vent length so yep. svl yep. um and they give you a formula times that by certain other things, and then you get your you can work out the cage requirements. So, so obviously a two gram baby is going to have a very small SVL, so snout to vent length. So obviously their cages are going to be a lot smaller. So you can scale it up to, mm. you know, to adults. Um, so they have. I think the main difference for me now as a licensee, as a licensed breeder, is I, I take regular temperature readings of the cages. I take regular, so all of my PVC cages have got UV, so I take mm, wow. UV readings yeah. um, and I take humidity readings. So mm. 
so that I don't have to do that. I'm always thinking smarter rather than working harder. And mm. most of my cages have cage sensors. So all I have to do is zap the cage and it downloads the reading. So I don't oh, have wow. to, you know, go and use yeah. a gun and measure it or anything. I just use an app on my phone and it downloads it. Um, mm. So that cool. that was a bit of a game changer for me. That was, you know, that was so easy. So mm. it takes automatically, it takes readings every 10 minutes on its own. It will do that. So all you That's have to nice. do is download it at regular intervals so your file isn't huge, you know. So I do that. <laughs> Um, so, so was that a requirement that you had to have that documentation or that's just something yeah. that you wanted to do? They didn't want to see any documentation from his historical time. So I only need mm. to do the readings from the moment I became licensed onwards. Okay. So they won't want to see, they don't, they're not interested in looking at your sales or anything like that. They're not interested in looking at historical records, um, they all they want to do is just check on the day they will come and just see if are they being kept in a very human humane way are they clean do yeah. they have the right size cage do they have the right humidity and the right heat for that species um you know those kind of things are they being fed he wanted to see the feet what i feed them so i had all my food out like a vast display like a pangea <laughs> stand um so and the supplements, so is this what you feed? How often do you feed? That kind of thing. And um, he kind of said to me, this is a funny thing he said to me, I um, I look, I checked on your website. I could tell they were really well made, you know, well looked after animals because you don't have animals like that if they're not well looked after. So I'll, that's good. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, I so guess, there's a lot I, of that. Oh, I was going to ask you, your, your inspector, your person that came, um, did it seem like they were knowledgeable about reptiles or did they seem passionate about animals or was it just kind of like a, they had to come check the box? And I just wonder um, if it's different here. I feel like a lot of the fish and wildlife people could care less. It's just, you know, yeah, it's, it's mean, just their job has, and they don't, they don't care. Most of them. He had done his research. So he did know a little bit. He did know a little bit about Cresties. Um, I think he was shocked when I, I'm there handing them to him and he was like, yeah, have a hold, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> have Winchester. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, <of> bite you. <laughs> the first one, here's um, the first one you should hold. Here you go. <laughs> here's a lychee. <laughs> this one's very really tame, nice. Honestly. <laughs> no. Here, he, rub this banana nice. on your finger. <laughs> <laughs> he was so he seemed really nice and I, I felt really reassured that he was such a nice guy to speak to we spent long much longer than what we needed to you know because I was mm. waffling on about this and that and projects and and he was really he he seemed really interested I mean I think his thing was dogs he, uh, he, loved, he loved dogs. his passion was dogs so Cresties with spots on or Cresties with stripes on, it's you know over his head um, a little bit. But, <laughs> no, but he I mean as part of his job he did take you know a professional interest, let's say. That's good. So I, I, I was reassured that he had done his homework and he did know that they came from New Caledonia, you know, and it isn't awesome. they don't need basking spots and they don't need, you know, extreme heat. Um, so he did know, he did seem to know a, quite a bit about them, which was good. So um, awesome. that's reassuring. Yeah. yeah. So the process for you was not um, too painful. It seemed like it, it was no. uh, pretty straightforward. And I think me being me, I over, did overthink quite a lot. So I was more, more, more than prepared than what I needed to be uh, just because mm -hmm. I wanted to cover every aspect because I was just mm. eager, you know, to get the license and get the certificate. Um, yeah. But um, I think um, I don't really do that much different now that I've got the license. I, I yeah. mean, the only thing, the only thing for me is the re recording the temps. I have to remember. Mm. I have a little schedule on the wall. When do I do my readings? And I just 
And once they've done, then I just get on with what I'm doing. So I don't do anything, you know, different than what I would normally. So do you have to pay an annual fee for the license? Um, you pay for the renewal. So it'll be when he comes back in two years time. So okay. that's mm. not too bad. It was 200 and how much was it? This is the oh. this is the funny thing because I've got a friend down south and we paid two different amounts. <laughs> Maybe it's by. <laughs> do you have like, do like in the U.S. we have counties? Do you have like yes. counties yeah. there? Uh, so maybe it's yeah. by that versus. Yeah. So every every council, every county council interprets things in a different way and charges mm. a different price. So I paid yeah. something like six two hundred and. 60 pounds and or i paid 230 and she paid something like 260 and it's like uh, okay. hey, uh, but interesting yeah i don't know why but it's you know it's and soon if i get the five stars up it will be every three so it's i wouldn't wow. and oh, yeah. you okay. know you can put it on your taxes anyway so it's an outgoing yeah. Yep. And so how, it how doesn't matter. So it doesn't really. How do you get so. the five star? Is that like a rigorous process, or is it pretty simple to get? I well, I I think I should be able. To, so he said when he comes back the next time, if I do everything the same as okay. what okay. you know, okay. I was doing when he came, then I should get the five star because I should be able to get because I've already now got the only thing stopping me from getting the five star was the the diploma so you have to have a call you are mm -hmm. you have to be qualified so uh, um so i got uh, in the meantime i've got the diploma in um hepatology so okay. um was, it, so was that process get... good did that go well i loved it i loved, oh, it. loved it yes oh, that's cool. i loved it so i'm thinking so that's what happens with the eggs when they get too cold or they get too warm or i was like mm. oh wow so it makes started to make sense things that had puzzled me in the past that i was getting the background information on so mm. i i i so I, I like learning anyway so i, I didn't yeah. see that as a negative um so i should get the five stars in when he comes back in Two years time, hopefully. That's awesome. Maybe all maybe all US breeders need to take a course as well, so we can all. Learn. <laughs> <laughs> People need to take a course so that when their gecko doesn't eat, they know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, they just come here. They come to the, the gecko pod to learn. <laughs> That's true. This is their this is their certification. Just listen to all these episodes. <laughs> this is their class. Yeah. That's um, cool. Donna, I wanted to ask, uh, from your standpoint, you know, in terms of. I think a lot of the, the, whether it's the UK, the Korean or the US market, it kind of tracks similarly in terms of the market value of things. Um, but from your standpoint, where is this hobby going? Um, and then we could talk a little bit about a certain morphs as well. But um, from your standpoint, what, what, what is your outlook in the, for the future? Projections, when, yeah. When, Projections, yeah. When, <laughs> let's just put it this way. When I first started, the most exciting thing was red pinstripes. Mm red pinstripes that's the only thing i wanted yeah. to breed straight away i was like oh my god red pinstripes <laughs> now <laughs> oh my word the morphs that are out now i've never yeah. known it to be such an exciting time and that's awesome. yeah. i find it really strange that you see people i know i'm gonna say it anyway fizzle out and they've lost the passion with the hobby this that and yes. the other yeah. i'm thinking how can you lose your passion? This is the most exciting time ever. <laughs> I love yeah. it. I love it. Yeah. Cappuccinos. Who yes. named that, by the way? But anyway, that's by the way. <laughs> Cappuccinos, Exanthics. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, sta Stables. <laughs> we we yeah. got to ask you. We're going to talk a little bit about that as we. <laughs> yeah. Um, Breaking yeah. news. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reveal it. I've got yes. a sable on the way. Oh, oh nice. nice. Where's it where's it coming I'm from? Yeah. Is it a male, female? And How big is it? I'm not sure. I'm not okay. sure. So it's a mystery package. So um oh, wow. I spoke to Xander at DDI and I said, You've got to tell me. I can't take this any longer. Is it is it I'm gonna say it because I don't know the sex. Is it okay? You know, is it is it healthy? Is it happy? Is it, you know? And yeah. he said, Yeah, stop worrying, it's fine, you know, it made the trip okay. <laughs> so so when will you receive it? 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Oh wow, oh, wow. nice. <laughs> we, we gotta post up on it so we can see it I am when so, you I am so excited. 
I can't even tell you. I've been dying, dying, absolutely dying to post a picture. And I've got this thing. I cannot post pictures before it's in my hand. I can't. I just can't yeah. do that. It's like a jinx. Yeah. So because yeah. Yeah. shipping is that. a long trip. It's a long trip. So, you know. That is a long but trip. I feel okay about saying it, announcing it, yeah. because I've spoken to Xander at DDI that it's nice. alive and well and 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, yeah, I'm going to be awesome. running around the house screaming. I was like, oh, <laughs> ah, this, yes, this is my first ever gecko from Gabby. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. I have never had a gecko from Gabby before. So I am that's so cool. excited. So excited. That's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. It's very I don't even know what the question was that you're, oh, the question was, where do you see the, the Outlook, market yeah. going? Yeah, Outlook of the hobby, the market. Um, yeah. I mean, it's just taking off, isn't it? I can't mm. even, I find it e extremely exciting. All these new things popping up that we've yeah. got a super sable, we've got a sable with a lily white, we've got sable cappuccino, lily we've white. got all these, yeah. me coming yeah. from a ball python breeding background with all these genetics that you know what you're doing. You've got, you've got a codom, you've got a recessive, you know what's going on. I mean, when I first started there. with Crestis, when, we were, when I started with Crestis and things were, oh, what, what you see is not what you're going to get. <laughs> you know, mm. Put a red to a red and get a black. I was like, how is that even possible? I don't get how that is even possible. It's or it's you do a gamble, yellow to right? a yellow and you get a black or something. You think, I can't take this. So now, <laughs> me with the codoms and the res recessives and, you know, yeah, and the super, oh, I love all of that. I love yeah. all, all the genetic. Do you, uh, do you have caps, caps and fraps? I do have a cappuccino, okay. yes, a male. Oh, I've got two, sorry. Okay. I've got so a male and a female. I've not you just got those in and you're working it this season? I got a male from the US, um, okay. reptile specialty, I think, oh. a female. Yeah. So she's in at the moment paired with a lily white to hopefully right. get some fraps. Um, the male that I've got is a lot younger. He's just a juvie. So I'm waiting. Mm -hmm. I'm just waiting. Hurry up and grow. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I know it's very, you know, um, what's the word? Contentious. But uh, cap to cap, the small nostrils and whatnot. But mm -hmm. I, I still think they look like little aliens. I would love. <laughs> I would just love one to see what Super it's cat. like just for, yeah. just for myself, yeah. So hmm. not really to sell or anything, just for me to have my own personal little alien, you know, to try. So I may, That's. I mean, that was the idea why I got a male and a female cap. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, have, the little Xantix. Yeah. How many breeding yeah. periods of Xantix do you have? It seems like you have, you're producing a lot of babies. I've got two... Pairs of visuals, um, okay. and uh, and a couple of lily white hats, and I've got what else have I got? Um, a few, just hundred percent hats as well, um, and I've got yeah, I've got a couple of um, different exanthic things going on. So projects within projects. So hmm. for this one. I wanted to create a super doll, not in this pairing. This will be, you know, in years to come, hopefully. My idea was to have a very pale-based exanthic to uh, and get ink spots all over it. A bit like Chimera. Yeah. That's where I want to go yeah. with the exanthics. Yeah. Um, yeah, that would be really cool. So, so what I would need to do for that, obviously, then is breed one of my visual males to one of my um, ink spot super, female, super light based ink spot females. Yeah, and get yeah, yeah and get some yeah. um, pale heads, het exanthic dalmatians. Yeah, so that's a, I've got so many projects. I've got to slow down. So <laughs> um, <laughs> this one, this I've got so many right? ideas what I want to do. That's so this hard. One's a that's Chimera. She's a okay. bit of a pudding. She's yeah, okay. she's a big lady. <laughs> what can I say? Exantic Chimera, huh? Yeah, that would be crazy. Exantic yeah. version of that. She would be pale grey underneath, yeah. yeah so we'll see. Awesome. We'll see what happens. It's just a baby project at the moment. The I've only I've only managed to get two adult visual exanthics with spots. 
to be able okay. to then you know take go the next stage so hmm. it's happening it's exciting <laughs> yeah yeah that's awesome so oh, yeah, yeah those are some of my visuals yeah the babies at the top <laughs> one of them is for sale actually at the moment i've got one up for sale I don't need four more babies to have visual. Yours are very, so, yours are very light, very light. Pale. Color, not uh, I'm a bit lazy when it comes to firing them up. That's the only thing. So I'll take yeah. them as I find them out of the cage, and they do tend to be like a dove, pale dove gray. But um, especially the um, the bottom left too, they fire up almost black but it's getting them to fire. Uh, it means sitting them in a damp tub and, and just firing them yeah. up for the next half an hour to an hour. But sometimes I just, for a photo's sake, I just grab them and just take yeah. the photo, um, which is probably not the best. You know, maybe I yeah. ought to try and get them fired up a bit more and um, right. it, they, they, good, they would be more impressive, yeah. Yeah, no, they um, but yeah, so where do I see the hobby going? I think it's just getting started. It, it it's there's so many yeah. things that people are doing that just blow my mind. Sometimes I feel like I'm way behind and I need to, you know, get on with things. But um, because so the, the some of the really really you know serious breeders are, are doing these crazy things, I think wow. But it's good to have somebody you know for you to look up to then you can sort of base your goals that's what i want to do that's where i want to be yeah i want to be like that when i grow yeah. up <laughs> <laughs> you're there already oh. you've reached it <laughs> you're the best reader in the uk so. <laughs> oh, wow. so so what would you say donna your um business strategy kind of for the future is i know obviously you've got these new projects like the um like the Xanthic Super Dolls, and you're working on your your white crested tricolors and all these different things. <laughs> what does if you're gonna kind of kind of boil down, maybe pick five things that is gonna be your focus as the next handful of years, or just a you know a handful of things. What would you say those things are gonna be for you? I think, um, well, this year in particular, I'm I'm only doing a few breed a few pairings, so I've already kind of thought to myself what's the most special that's important to me and the most important thing for me at the moment is um my xanthics and my dolls and those are the two main things on the front burner let's say okay. rather than yeah. and the, the other things are on the back burner for now just for me to catch my breath with because i think the the danger is with so many projects going on i'm not going to do any i'm doing so so many that yeah um, you're not doing any justice. Yeah, so you're not doing this, anything well because you're doing so many things, yeah. potentially. So, like that, that's the yeah. risk. Yeah. So I'm trying to be very, very selective this year and just pick my absolute favorite animals and do the most, the ones that you can't live without type pairings. Mm. Um, so I think I posted a photo of legion and prestige um so that's yeah i, saw I don't know if you can see on my thing that's prestige there yes. and i think on on instagram i posted that a day or so ago so that pairing is already underway um awesome. do you have so, do you have eggs from them not yet because i just put them in together yesterday oh, nice yeah so just to make sure okay. you know i so, so I just observed and watched, make sure they were they're okay. So yeah. How beautiful. So the front, the left one is uh, Legion, and the right one is Prestige. What pairs um, produce those? Did you produce those in house? Now then, here we go again. Uh, the right Prestige <laughs> is a completely, totally Lily Exotics production. Uh, okay. Cool. It's Mr. Spotty and Dottier, and that was from Max in France. Max Gat. Okay. Um, yep. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm sure people will have heard of him, Max from France. He's got, um, I'm not even sure what his page is called. Um, I know he breeds a lot of leeches now. I don't think he breeds quite as many cresties as he used to do. But his name is Max Gat. 
and um, she yep. came from him from the south of France. He drove her all the way up to the north of France to meet with my courier. Wow. I mean, that is insane <laughs> that he did that for me to all, yeah, to the north of France so that I could, so he could coordinate with my career and then I could get her. So that desperate to have a Mr. Spotty kid. Um, and Legion is um, a bullseye kid from Cresty King. Oh, nice. So he, so that's he's the got male, own, the male and the pair. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, nice. Bullseye is a very pale lemon, pale yellow. Um, when he fires down, he's like crisp white with these huge, incredible ink spots, ink spots yeah. everywhere, which just, I mean, it was just, when I saw a picture of that, it was just insane. So um, he came from a trade from that. So, um, I did a trade a, a few years ago. So he's from that. So um, from a, so a bullseye kid. So, uh, yeah, kind of special. Beautiful. Yeah, I'm excited for those new Dal pairings. <laughs> that mail I got from you, I think, is from, uh, oh gosh, uh, Bet Bedlam and Siren. Is that how you say? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm, ex Siren I'm excited for him. Some gorgeous kids. Yeah, some really big ink spot kids. So, um, yeah. Bedlam had a bit. I've some... paired him to a few, uh, a few girls, and he's doing good. So. Oh, good. I'm glad you yeah. like him. Yeah, um, awesome. Bedlam's had a bit of a yeah. He's sat, sitting this season out, so poor mm. Bedlam. <laughs> <laughs> when these a young guns come on, a little rest. Yeah, <laughs> he, he keeps reminding me though. I'm, you know, when's it my turn? You know, <laughs> um, but I don't want to sell him, but I don't have. I want to let the new boys have a go. You know, I want mm. to see what they can produce. So it, it's tricky when you've got you've got these new males that you want to try. Um, some of the established males get to sit it out a season or two, I'm afraid. Yeah, so, I do that too. I Some people will sell their males before they've proved out their new males to be a better yeah. version. And I don't do that. I'll like, I'll let them sit a year and not breed just to be sure. Yeah. That my yeah. new male yeah. breeds well. And yeah. Um, yeah. Cause I don't want to lose that, that, no legacy um, but I... Bedlam, I bred bedlam for so many years though i was like mm. well when i say so many i've only been going a few <laughs> years so it's not that many years but um i bred him for a few seasons after each other about five seasons in a row and i thought it's time for a change i'm getting yeah. tired customers will get tired they want something new so yeah, i thought sure. yeah. New lineage. Um, as soon as Legion was at the right age and weight to, you know, breed, I tried him out last season. So I will be releasing some Legion kids. But I've been really, yeah, I've been quite bad, really. I've not released many kids at all. I've, I think I've only released two. Just hoarding them all. <laughs> <laughs> when it's Sounds a like new me. pairing, though, you want to check them out, don't you? When it's a new pairing yeah. and you don't yeah. know what to expect... I yeah, kind of have hold on to them yeah. much longer than what probably I would if I, I'd done a season already. When mm. you've done a season already with that male or that pairing, you kind of know what to expect. And I feel a little bit more confident in releasing them a bit earlier because you think, oh, that's not showing the right things that I want, I'm looking for. But when mm. it's a new pairing, I've been so reluctant to sell any. It's like... <laughs> until, until you figure it out yep until you figure out yeah what they can produce. exactly yeah yeah, yeah. Winchester, Winchester produces the best stuff amazing amazing stuff so but um, at one day winchester will be replaced i'm sure as sad as it is <laughs> this, is this is it i know this is, this is it i'm looking for the way it goes. Winchester replacement yeah uh, so yeah. when one pops out i'm sure i'll know so yeah. i'm just waiting for that one to wow me um <laughs> so We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Donna, so are you at this point, are you looking to maintain in terms of your size? Are you looking to grow out even further uh, for your business? What are you looking to accomplish in the coming years besides the projects, obviously, uh, that you're working on? I don't on? think I want to increase the numbers. Like, okay. hmm. like AJ said, I think I might get the breaking point, you know, when I have. So at the so moment, many. I'm enjoying my animals yeah. and I have time hmm. to 
say hello and they're almost like pets, you know. Um, <laughs> so I enjoy, I've got time to take a photo. If I see somebody fired up and I think, oh, I've got to take a picture. Right, let's get the hit oh, out, yeah. you know. Um, and I think if I have lots of a larger number, I wouldn't enjoy it as much. So I, at the moment, I'm at the right, for me, it feels like the right amount because it's manageable in terms of work. Um, but also um, I've got the right amount of animals that I can switch around and I can do my pairings. Um, mm -hmm. I've got a bit of choice with the pairings. So I think in if I, if I was going to be honest, what I would like to do is increase the premises size. Uh, so mm, I so give everybody, yeah, even more space. So, or... Yeah. Uh, not necessarily fit more animals in to that space, but give them more, you know, like more display, elaborate displays um, for my own pleasure rather than, you know, like I would like to see um, the mornings in a bit more of a naturalistic, you know, with like proper bioactive with growing plants because mm. I like my plants as well. So I would love yeah. to expand in that area and and try and go down some you know proper natural naturalistic setups type displays yeah, yeah do you so, have a basement by the way or do you have everything up in your home there we actually build uh, we built a building outside for oh, okay. them so they have they're all in and out outdoor building so um but now i've outgrown it okay <laughs> so, so now you have geckos in the house too <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have any in the house. Oh, okay. You, have um, room then. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't totally outgrown it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Strange. I, awesome. I'm gonna say this, it's kind of strange, but my other my partner um developed a, an allergy to oh. um to the moss or something. So yeah. oh, we wow. we yeah, so we built yes. a building specially just for me and my, my geckos. So okay. Which you know, we're lucky that we've got the space that we can, we can do that. So, I think the next thing is, I, I want, I would like a bigger space. So, because I'd like to put some of my, my exotic, my rare plants in there as well. So, yeah. mm -hmm. and have kind of like a jungly gecko house. You yeah, know, that would be my, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I've got my music all set up in there. I've got my. I don't say it, my um, my smart speaker, because if I say her name, she'll start talking to us. Um, so I have that in my in my building, and it's my own little world. So it's yeah, I love it. Yeah, that's, so that's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. So Donna, as we kind of close out and land the plane, we always ask advice for new breeders. From your perspective, um, talking to new breeders, what is the best way to break into the hobby to begin their collection? you know, just very beginning advice and wisdom from you to a new breeder? Well, I mean, I'm going to give the advice, but I wish I'd followed my own advice when I was starting out because <laughs> when I started out, I liked this, I liked that, I liked the other, I liked, well, I liked yellows, I liked blacks, I liked, I told you I liked the reds, that's why Crimson yeah. Cresties, the <laughs> name came about. Maybe Dark Cresties. Um, dark Crest <laughs> and bottom, Dark Cresties, yeah. So I liked yellows, I liked... And I, I, I think my head was just spinning and I I just bought, oh, that looks like a pretty gecko. That looks like a pretty gecko because I wasn't intending on being a gecko breeder. I was just like, oh, I like mm. that. And I like this and I like that. But then nothing really went together because then I thought, oh, well, the more I got into the hobby, it was like going down a, a black rabbit. hole into the Alice in yeah. the rabbit hole in Alice in Wonderland. And once you're in, then you see these breeders and you think, oh, wow, that's what I need to do, you know. And um, I wish I would have had more of an idea where I wanted to go rather than just yeah. buying up yeah. everything that I saw, basically, in a kind of a buying frenzy. And um, mm. so that would have, one, saved me a lot of money, but saved me a lot of heartache because I've got this now that I need to find a pair for and, you know, and I've got all these odd oddments that I'm trying to put together and it doesn't really work. So I would say yeah. try not to get too swept up. Try not <laughs> I mean I've sold I sold a gecko to a person 
And then in the next six months that I've known the person, they've they've got like a page, they've got like a dozen geckos. I'm like, how many have you got already? So take it <laughs> steady. Try not to get too excited because it oh, is exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Try and have a bit of a, almost like a shopping list. I want to create a tricolor, right? So what do I need for that? So I need yeah. this and this, you know. And where am I going to get those from? Which are the good tricolor breeders? Right. Okay. Make yourself known to them. You know, don't mm -hmm. make yourself a pest, but um, <laughs> speak to them. And um, you've got a better chance of getting something if you are already friends with the breeder, I think. I know that's, I know it's sad, but it's true. Um, just take it steady. Try not to. Because I see so many people in the first year or so, um, they've bought like 20 geckos and now they can't cope. And they've got all these babies and they don't know where to start. They don't know what to do with them yeah. all. So Sounds like Harry. Yeah, that's what I did, <laughs> But, but I exited my room. I got that's some amateur hour. Harry got like 80. <laughs> pace yourself. Pace yourself. Now, I wish pace I'd yourself, taken yeah. that advice when I was yeah. starting out. I wish someone would have told me that, you know. Yeah. Um, Focus but obviously, if you're buying, no one's going to say, "Don't you know? Don't buy from me." Yeah, just, yeah, buy, buy, buy. Um, yeah. But I would awesome. say try not to get too overwhelmed by, you know, mm. by it, um, mm. uh, and just take your time and don't don't pair everything to anything. <laughs> Have yeah. be selective. Don't just pair them, you know. Every, just because you've got a male and a female, it doesn't mean to say you've got to put the two together. You know, yes. they've got to match. Um, they've got to enhance each other's qualities somehow. Um, yeah. It's tricky. It's tricky. It really is tricky. Um, but I think, yeah, I think that's the main story. I would, I would seriously advise people to rather than buy six geckos all at 100 pounds each save save that 600 pounds and buy one good one yes um and that you know is gonna be versatile that you can use in different projects you know that is gonna has good lineage because it might seem cost effective to buy six at all 100 pound each because i've got a bargain there but <laughs> you know it's you're not going to get the quality so i would Try and save, save up, and just get a couple of really good ones rather than several, like ten little ones. All uh, you know. Mm, yeah. It's e yeah. it's easy for me to say, isn't it? Because you know. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's good advice. I know that a lot of people um, take the approach that you had just mentioned, which is get a lot of animals, but don't really focus on quality, and then it's a it's a quick recipe for burnout when especially yeah. if you breed all of those animals and then you're struggling yeah. to sell the offspring because they're not yeah. as desirable yeah so exactly. i think that's really yeah that's really good advice yeah, yeah that's awesome. one, one thing also that i would do is which i'm just thinking back to how i learned i would you know when breeders post up their pairings oh this is 2023 pairings my pairings folder have a look at what they're pairing to each other why are they pairing those two animals together? What do they hope to achieve? If I did that similar pairing, what would I get? Why mm. is that person? Because I, I saw, now I'll tell you why I paired um, Winchester to a very plain, you know, black and cream female war cry to get war room that Gabby has. Mm -hmm. I saw that Chase had paired um Jarvis, which is black and white, kind of, I mean, he's incredible. Don't get me wrong. He's incredible. He's one of my all-time favorites. Um, but he paired, paired a plainish gecko like that, black and white, to a tricolor. And sure as, sure as damn it, he got incredible. He either got Jarvis replicas or he got the tricolor replica. And I thought, right, that's why. Because sometimes... A really highly patterned, highly coloured to another highly patterned, highly coloured. Sometimes the I think the patterns and the colours don't always match. But by doing a you know, 
a plainish one to a, a pa highly patterned one, it complemented. Uh. So if anything, look at breeders' photos, see what they're pairing together who have been around a lot longer than you and see if you can learn because yeah, that, that I, that's what I did. I mean, yeah, I didn't yeah. know what I'm pairing to each other. So um, people think, oh, she's so experienced. You know, she knows what she did. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so look at people's readers' photos and, and see if you can gather some information. Oh, what are they doing? You know, how are they doing it? And see mm. what you can learn from them. That's what yeah. I would say as well. Yeah. That's awesome. Thanks, well, thank you so much, Donna. That was awesome. I think uh, I learned a lot. I think this will be a great episode for for people to listen to. So thank you for everything. Um, so I'll can ask you, you where can talk? people? Yeah, yeah, it's been awesome. <laughs> where can where can people find you and your animals and all things Crimson Cresties? Where can we? Uh, okay, so on my Instagram profile, there's what's what I call a, a, a tap link landing okay. page. I don't. Is that my, I don't, is that, yeah. yeah so on my Instagram, there's a tap link, which yep, when you I tap it, it takes you to a landing page, which will um, send you off in all different directions. There'll be links to everything on there. So that is my, if you scroll, there's all my, there's my emails, there's my available geckos, there's oh, nice. links there's links to um, articles about husbandry, about the licensing. Oh, um, oh wow. So there's basic, yeah. So that one little page will take you to my website, um, mm. what's available on there. So, um, you know, anything that's like special, I will give a mention on that little page there as well. So, um, you know, to advertise it there a little bit to give people a mention. So, sometimes, like I mentioned, I think I gave this podcast a mention when um, oh, awesome. I think it was Stan. I posted, yeah, I posted. Um, yeah, thank you for that. A Appreciate link on that. there straight yeah. to the YouTube video to, to your podcast on there as well. So sometimes things get a little mention on there. Um, so That's very cool. Yeah, so that will take you yeah. through to. The, so that's one if you don't know how to get me i'm on instagram i'm on facebook i'm on i'm trying to do tiktok don't yeah no i'm not very good at tiktok <laughs> i've given up on that donna <laughs> TikTok's hard to, to i never tried i'm, I'm, I'm trying that. but i'm not very good um <laughs> but if, if there's one place that you you can be sure to find me go on instagram the tap link is there and that'll take you to all the the all the other links so you don't have to remember everything that's right quite here. easy. Link in bio, let's say. Cool. Awesome. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, follow Donna, uh, Crimson Cresties, uh, message her, say hi to her, thank her for this episode and just the knowledge that she has. And if you want any of her animals, you can hit her up and chat with her. She has plenty of good stuff. And, um, <clears throat> any I will final be releasing more. Words? I will be releasing more. Um, I've been hoarding them, but I, I promise I will start releasing more. <laughs> Release them. Awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> That's cool. Um, well, yeah, thank you, Donna. We really appreciate your, uh, your time and joining us. I know it's later in the evening for you. It's morning time for morning. -ish for me and AJ. <laughs> morning, afternoon. It's just, yeah, it's seven o'clock here, 7 p.m. Okay. So, okay. okay. I'm sorry if I here. babbled because I, I usually talk faster when I'm nervous. Mm -hmm. So. I know. You're if I, if I, I bubble, hopefully yeah, people no. can understand what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm sure they will. It was all good. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Donna. We appreciate oh, you guys. And thank you guys for joining one us. Last yeah. plug, one yeah. last plug. I will be in Tinley in October. Oh, there you go. Oh, nice. Okay. So yeah, we'll yeah, see yeah. you there. <laughs> Are you going to make I'm it an annual? See you all again. So, yeah. Gabby said that we're going to, we're going in town on Thursday night. So, um, cool. I don't know what that means, but. I I'm think sure into the city, exciting. into Chicago, yeah. Woo! Yeah, it'll be yeah, good. Yeah. So I'm looking it's forward to around. that. Yeah, the flight's booked. I've got my hotel at the Even Hotel at the conference center, right. so nice. that's all sorted. I was a bit right. excited. I just booked everything in one go. I was like, oh. So <laughs> I'm excited for that. So people so. can see right. uh, People can catch you at Tinley this October. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. I will be in Tinley. And all being well, I will bring a very small selection of really high-end Cresties as well awesome. to that yeah. show. Great. Very cool. That's so. exciting. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you guys. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us and uh, follow us at the Gecko Pod. Harry at Zero's Geckos, AJ at AJ D Reptile Tiles, and uh, Donna at Crimson Crusty. So thank you guys. We'll see you yep. guys. Thank, thank you guys. Bye.